Hello Aztecs, welcome to lesson six. To create a good workout plan, you need to be able to reflect on your fitness levels so that you can plan and adjust which direction your fitness levels go. The FIT principle is a physical education acronym that helps explain and guide how we get in shape and then improve on it. The F in FIT stands for frequency. How often or frequent are we exercising? Every day? Every other day? Once a week? Or never? Are we resting some muscles while working out others? Are we giving our muscles the two to three days of rest for recovery to avoid overtraining? Are we stretching enough? The I in FIT stands for intensity. How hard are we working? How intense is our workout? For example, it takes more energy to run than walk. Therefore, we're using more intensity. Are we just going through the motions when working out? Or are we using the principle of overload to improve? Are we making our workouts more difficult than the last one so that our muscles adapt to the stress that we put on them? How do we make our exercise more intense? Do we add more weight, more repetitions, or more sets? Should we go longer, go faster, or go harder? The first T in FIT stands for time. How much time are we spending on exercise? Are we spending enough time stretching? Should we speed up our repetitions or slow them down? How many exercises are we willing to commit to over time? The more we do, the more time it takes. Are we running for longer periods of time? Are we walking a longer distance, therefore taking more time? Are we spending enough time stretching? The last T and FIT stands for type. What type of exercises will we do? What type of equipment will we work out on? Will our exercises be the type without equipment? Are we cross training so that we don't wear down our muscles and joints? Are we doing the right type of stretches to keep a good range of motion to support our exercise plan? Are we choosing to contract our biceps with a barbell or with a dumbbell? What type works better for our goals? Are we jogging today because we did push-ups and pull-ups yesterday? Or are we using the principle of specificity to practice our throwing motion? Because practice makes perfect. The FIT principle will guide the direction of our workout. Here's a quick review so that you don't confuse the principle of overload with the principle of progression which I'm now adding to your vocabulary. In lesson four, you learned that your fitness levels won't progress unless you raise the level of intensity and do more than you normally are used to. This is the principle of overload, not to be confused with the principle of progression, which says if we raise the levels too slowly, overload won't work. And if we progress too fast, there will be an injury. Therefore, we need to combine both principle of overload and principle of progression for success. Not only do we need to raise the intensity and do more than normal to improve, but it also has to progress at the proper pace. Too slow doesn't help to progress, and too fast causes injury. You have to be able to answer the following question for a good exercise plan. How are you going to make your workout more difficult without overtraining? Here are some examples of how you might try to progress. You decide you want to improve your cardio, especially your jog. So you choose to make your jog harder by continually adjusting one or more of the following in the list. More time jogging with less time walking. Add time to your overall jog. Add distance to your jog. Add speed to your jog. Add small weights to your jog. Maybe you jog up a hill. Maybe you jog upstairs. Maybe you jog in the sand. As you progress through your workouts, you continually reflect on how to make your jog harder. You continue to reflect and reassess after every workout. You go with what works for you, and change what doesn't. You slowly learn to listen to your body and then adjust. You keep pushing yourself, but don't overtrain. Give your muscles the rest they need, therefore avoiding injury. These are the progressions of people who exercise properly. Here's the next example. You want to improve your pectoralis strength, so you decide to focus on improving your bench press. So you choose your workout for your pectoralis and continually adjust it with one of the following. You choose to work out more times a week while still allowing for the two to three days rest for your chest workout. 
Add weight to your bench press movement. Add repetitions to your bench press movement. Add sets to your bench press movement. Maybe you change the angles of your bench press. You work more incline or a little more decline. You use dumbbells instead of barbells for your bench press. As in the other scenario, you continually reflect and adjust as needed to keep a balance so that you can improve while avoiding injury. You can take these concepts into any exercises that you might do and get positive results. A good workout plan keeps adjusting based on reflection. It's always a balance between overload and progression compared to overtraining. Just learn to listen to your body. Don't forget to take the quiz. See you next time.